Hello class, I'm going to make a little screencast recording to help you as you're trying to run the simulation. One of the uh, helpful hints that most students uh, have commented on is uh, being able to forecast where the markets are going. Now in the simulation, they tell you exactly where the markets are going. If you did the situational analysis, uh, you don't have to, um, but in the situational analysis, they talk about the perceptual map and they know how the markets drift over time. And um, most customers in the low tech segment prefer, uh, prefer right in the dead center of the circle versus in the high tech segment, they have this ideal offset. Now, every time the simulation is ran and every time it's restarted, it's important to check your industry conditions. So I'm going to go into the industry conditions report. Here is the uh, industry conditions report for this industry. And I can see how it starts off in the center right here, of low tech 4.6 and this, for performance for size is 15.9. For high tech performance is 5.8 and size is 14.7. And here are the offsets, the ideal offsets. And it also tells you the drift rates. It's important to check these every time it's reset and every year that you, or every time you restart the simulation. Because every semester that I've taught this class, it seems like these numbers change, they vary. And so you've got to look at your own industry conditions report each time you open it up to make sure you understand what the industry conditions are. Okay, so I've downloaded the industry conditions into a separate PDF. And um, I can see how these move at the end of each year. And I also know they move a little bit each month. Now it is critical that in the high tech area, you know where the ideal size is. And one of the most important buying criteria for the high tech customers is right here, ideal positioning. So if you're going to spend, you know, a million dollars or more coming up with a new product, it is critical that you get it right in the right spot when it's brand new. That's almost 50% of the high tech customers decisions is based on position and age being brand new and you don't want to miss it. Now, um, so for example, I'm going to open up my decisions here. And I just want to show you something that's just a little different, a little unique in the simulation. Um, so I've been playing around with this simulation. I'm actually in round, going into round three right now. Here are my decisions. So suppose I'm coming out with a new product. And I say I want to come out with a new product. Let's call it A1. And I'm looking out here, and it looks like to me that if I put it at 10.0 and 10.0, and 10.0, that would be in the right spot. I'll just make it like that. Get recalculate. But it's not actually going to hit the market until April of 2024. That's almost a year and a half away. And is that the right spot? Because you look at these circles here, and I, I'm going to show you the um, high-tech industry segment. Right now in the year 2022, you know, this is the ideal spot, 8.6 and 11.9. What's going to be the ideal spot in April of 2024? Do you want to guess or would it be helpful to have a spreadsheet that would actually tell you exactly what the ideal spot is in April of 2024? And that's what we're going to build today is what I call a drift rate template. Now, the reason why I call it a template is a template is something that you can use over and over again. So as you design it, you want to be thinking about ways that you can use it over and over again. You want your variables to be input in a certain area and then everything that's calculated, you want it to be based on those variables. So what I usually do with all my templates is I name them BA211 drift rate, if I can type correctly, drift rate template. Um, so I just have an idea of what my drift rate template's going to be. And I know I'm going to have a low tech, uh, actually I'll start over here, low tech market segment. And I know I'm going to need at least two columns because when I look at um, this right here, it actually shows me that there are two columns that I need, you know, for low tech, I need performance and size, and for high tech, I need performance and size. So I'm going to kind of mirror that, uh, P, F, performance, and then size. And then I'm going to do something called merge and center, and I'll go ahead and center these, and then as much as possible, I always like to copy. And then all I have to redo is type the word high, because so now it's high tech. Uh, let me make sure I've got that in the right areas. Yep. And then I also know that I have an ideal spot. And I'm going to come over here and just copy it. So I'm using Control C and Control V. I use the shortcut keys, or you can come up here and click on uh, copy and paste. 
but I'm usually a kind of a keyboard uh, junkie. I like to use keyboards as much as possible. And this is actually called a uh, high tech ideal. Okay. And then I may add a little color to it just because I like uh, just, no, oh, not that one. Keep the font back in black, but I'll just shade this maybe blue. High tech, I'll make it a light uh, green maybe. And then high, deal, high tech ideal, make it more of a dark green. So I know that's what I'm supposed to be at. Um, I'm going to come over here. And this is actually going to be, um, let's see, I'll call this the date. And I'll call this the round. So I know I'm going to have a round zero that's going to start on 12, 31, 2020. Maybe that was the date. Um, performance size, uh, things like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this. I'll just scroll down a little bit and make it more of a uh, grid here. And I'll make this maybe bolded around here or something. And then I'll just copy formatting. I have a little form paste. Oops, should have done that. But that's okay. Change that back to dark green right there. Okay. And then I'm just going to come down here and just add some some grids for that. I'll maybe bold this, make it just a little bit bigger. So I know that's my header. And then when I view, I'll just go ahead and take off the grid lines. Okay. So for low tech in the center of low tech, starting out in round zero, it's got 4.6 and 15.9. Actually, I'm going to do something a little different. I forgot I'm making this as a template. And so these are actually going to be my inputs. Uh, 4.6, 15.9, and make this is 5.8, and 14.7. Okay, and this is going to be my drift rates. I'm just uh, okay, I'll just go right there. I know that for performance for drift rates, it's going to go plus 0.5 and minus 0.5. So I'll just say plus 0.5. I'll hit minus 0.5, and over here I'll hit plus 0.7, I'll hit minus 0.7, and over here the ideal offset, which is right in here, if I go down here, the ideal offset for high tech, performance is plus 1.4 and size is negative 1.4. Performance is plus 1.4 and size is negative 1.4, uh, like that. Um, and then I'm going to actually shade this in yellow because this actually tells me, and you can use whatever color you want. I prefer yellow. This kind of tells me this is my input cells of where I can change variables every time it runs. Round zero and this is the date. And then I'm going to come down and actually copy this just to row down here and then take off the yellow because this is actually going to be where it calculates the numbers. Um, and I know that my next month, because it moves a little bit each month, there we go, and this is round one now. I'm in round one. This is where it gets a little tricky. Um, I'm just going to copy this down to 11 rows. I wonder where 11 rows was at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's only 10, so I need a couple, of, a couple more. So I've got that down here. And then I'm going to actually do a little trick where you can highlight both these cells and Excel's, Excel can learn the pattern that you have going on here. I copy it down and see how it does it at the end of each month, all the way down to 12, 31, 2021. Um, that's going to be my center. Now, the way I'm going to do this is that in round zero, that's the center. And I'm going to actually say, go to here. It's so like I hit plus. I usually hit plus just because the uh, plus key is a big number on my keypad. And I know that once I type those in, I'm just going to come over here and paste that and paste that. Oh, that won't work. That's okay. Um, I'm going to actually do this plus, I shall do this plus this. And then I'll do this plus this. Okay. Now I'm going to stop and do a quick check. And the way I do a quick check is I go back and I look at my, um, let's see, I'm going to have to go back around. Let me close this out and go back and exit out of here because I was in round three, but I'm backing up a little bit. So I'm going to exit out of here, click exit. And I want to go back to some of my old reports. So if I go into my industry reports and I go back to my round zero fast track report, I can view my round zero fast track report and I can just double check that in round zero 
for the high tech, that's low tech, for high tech, ideal spot, positioning was 7.2 and size was 13.3. Hopefully that's right. Let me check. 7.2 and 13.3. That's the ideal spot. So I'm starting off in the right spot. This is the numbers that I input. Uh, and now I'm going to do some formulas. I do this number, which is the one right above it, plus parentheses, this number divided by 12. Because it moves a little bit each month, but I don't, and that point five is for the whole year. Divided by 12. Ooh, and that's kind of a big number. I don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to format it down just to the 10th. No, it changed it to brackets. No, that's okay. I don't care with that. And then I come over here and hit control V here. Make sure it's doing the right thing. I just hit F2. Yep, that's right. Um, but I want to be able to copy this all the way down. So I'm going to do something called anchoring. This C7 cell, I want to anchor. And I'm going to come in here and I can either type the dollar signs right in here and right in here. This anchors it. Or I can just hit F4 if you're on a PC. F4 actually anchors it. And now it's anchored. Um, and I can come all the way down here and it looks like it'll go all the way down to there. Um, this one now I'm going to anchor also. Hit F4. And I'm just going to double click when it hits on the crosshairs right here and it just copies it all the way down where my table's at. Excel's kind of smart that way. And then I know it's going to be this number plus parentheses this number divided by 12, because right, I want to go with each month. And then I got to remember to anchor the E7 and copy that all the way down. And then it's going to be, yeah, let's see, be this number plus parentheses, oops, this number divided by 12. And I copy that all the way down. Oops. I forgot to anchor it. You see what happens when you forget to anchor it? It started to float. And so now it's trying to float different things and it didn't anchor it to that number because I wanted, I wanted it, this number, no, not that, I wanted this number to be anchored. F7 had to be anchored. So I'm going to anchor it and recopy it down. Now that's correct. And then I know that this is actually going to be this number plus that number and I need to anchor that number. And it's going to be this number plus that number. I need to anchor this number. And now I'm just going to copy them all the way down. So at the end of round one, I have the center as this for low tech. And the ideal spot for high tech is that. And I'm going to just double check my numbers. Uh, two ways I can double check my numbers. I can go to the industry conditions report. And I can see that after round one, Performance for low tech should be 5.1 and 15.4. I come over here and it's 5.1 and 15.4. The center for high tech should be 6.5 and 14.0. 6.5 and 14.0. That's correct. But now to see the ideal spot, I'm actually going to go to my round one fast track report. So I go to my round one. I'm going to view my round one fast track report. And I can see that the ideal spot for high tech at the end of round one at 12, 31, 21 should be 7.9 and 12.6, 7.9, 12 12.6. Okay. So I've correctly, correct, I have correctly forecasted the drift rates over the next 12 months for the first round and the ideal spot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over here and hit this number plus one, right? Because I know that I need to, all the way down, I've got to hit eight rounds. How far down is eight rounds? That's only four, five, six, I'm getting closer. It's probably gonna be pretty close to there. Seven, eight, oh, not quite. Let's see how far down is it going to go. Okay, so I only need to go down to row 107. That's my round numbers. And you see how I did that? I just, because I had already typed in 12 ones, now I'm just adding one on top of that. And I was able to copy it all down. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of this and double click. And it automatically is going to fill all eight years every month, all the way to 12, 31, 20, 28. And now, because I've done these numbers correctly, I can grab that whole row and hop, copy it all the way down. And it's all the way down here to round eight. Now I'm just gonna do a quick double check to make sure I did this correctly. If I go back to my industry conditions report, round eight should be 8.6 and 11.9 for low tech. 
Come over here, 8.6, 11.9. And then for high tech, 11.4, 9.1. That's correct. And then I'm going to come back here to the ideal spot. Um, grab this. And this one I won't be able to double click because there's nothing next to it. Excel doesn't isn't that smart. It only looks at the cells next to it. But I can come down here, and now I have the ideal spots all the way to the end of eight rounds. One thing I'm going to do at the very end that I like to do is I like to actually freeze the view because if I freeze the view right here, now when I scroll down, oh, not right there. Let me unfreeze. I'll go one more row right here. Freeze the view. Now I can see the performance and size as I scroll down to each month. And one other cosmetic thing is I want all this to be um, grids, you know, blocks right here. Um, and I'll make it like that. So I've got it row by row. And now I've got a drift rate template that I can use um, to forecast for all eight rounds. And then each time the, the simulation is reset, if you have different segment centers or the ideal spot is offset, you can use it here because when you do the final exam, there, there will be some variance to it. So if you set it up this way, it gives you the ability to change and vary drift rates and ideal offsets that may occur in the final exam. So now that you've finished it, you need to use your template to create, to uh, complete the quiz. Uh, complete the quiz in iLearn uh, and then submit this in iLearn, but this is where you'll find the answers for the quiz in iLearn. Good luck.